How you doing? I figured since I fixed my trip light UPS, let's see if we can fit one of these 12 volt batteries into this APC. This one has two, I think they're 20 amp hour, um, six volt batteries, but they're big ones anyway, quite big. Anyway, I've already got the case off this thing. And, uh, oh, they're 10 amp hour. So we're going to add two 10, 10 amp hour 6 volt cells in it and we're going to replace the batteries on this with um, single 8 amp hour 12 volt battery and I, I hope it will work. This has got a big metal bracket that um, holds the batteries in place and there may not be enough clearance. I'm hoping there's enough clearance between the terminals otherwise we could have some major sparks. I may have to get creative in how the battery is tied down if uh, I can't put the brackets back in. But uh, this is an American made APC, American power conversion. Just to prove the country of original, it says right down here, made in the USA. And this is a real UPS. This is how you make a UPS. You saw what the other one looked like, all plastic and crap and just looked like a piece of junk that it is. Here's a real UPS. Look at the circuit board on this thing. It's beautiful. Look at all the components on it. All these ICs. This thing's a work of art. This is, this is American manufacturing at its best. And anybody who is 1991, that's when I got this thing. Anybody who says that the Yanks don't know how to make electronics, uh, the Yanks do know how to make electronics, and they know how to make electronics ex extremely well. I mean, this is this is beautiful. You look at the soldering on the other one, and it's all these little surface-mounted components, the little chip components on it. I mean, th this is a device that's handling a lot of power. And uh, look at the size of the transformer. And this is rated at the same power as the other one. This is only 450 watt. Just like the other one, and uh, but look at the size of the transformer, it's huge, it's like twice the size. This thing also weighs about twice as much as the other one, and it's in a big metal case. This is how UPSs need to be made. You, you know, you're, you're talking something that's got the potential, it stores enough energy in there that if you had a fire inside one of these things, you want to contain it to the cabinet, you don't want something made out of plastic that. Uh, could catch on fire and you know that I mean but we're talking a, a, a huge cost difference I, I think when this when I bought this new uh, this unit probably set me back five or six hundred dollars maybe more I, I, I shudder to think of what I paid for this thing but I, I can guarantee you it was a lot of money um, that one was 150 bucks and when I inquired about getting the batteries for this thing before um, I was told the batteries were going to cost me, but I think they, they, I was quoted, I think, $60 a piece for these 6 volt, 10 amp hour batteries. That's why I didn't change them the last time. I didn't replace the batteries. When I initially tried to get these batteries, I went down to Active Components, which is where I ended up buying the other one from, and they told me the batteries were going to cost as much as the new unit, and well, he sold me that other unit, as I think I said in the other video. It didn't last, it died, it died smoking. Um, I wrangled another one out of the shop under huge protest from them and the new one didn't last either. So I'm not too fond of made in China uh, electronics even though everything including the camera that I'm shooting this on is made in China these days. This is made in USA. And I have a few items that are made in USA. I have a stereo MTS NTSC video modulator that I bought at Radio Shack and I was quite shocked to see the words made in USA on it. And it's also a very well made unit. Anyway, let's tear this thing down and take these batteries out and we'll put in one of these other rescued battery looks to be the same length it's not going to be quite as wide as these two together 
and I just hope it'll fit under this plate. I may have to do some cutting or something on here to make the thing fit, but let's get the screwdriver out here and we'll start dismantling this unit. So on this APC 450, there's holes in the top of the chassis here, which allow you to access the screws that hold the battery clamps. I don't know whether there's more of them at the back that I need to get at, but there's one side of the clip off. Looks like the clip is probably attached at the back here somewhere too that will need to come out to release the batteries. Maybe not. It may just lift up. Looks like it might be attached below the transformer. So we'll just remove these screws that hold the transformer or one side of the transformer down. Look at the size of this thing. This thing's huge. Okay, I wonder if I can... I probably have to take out the ones on the other side too. Maybe not. I might be able to slide it out under that plug. I may be able to slide this bracket forward enough to take it out. Usually the uh, Americans are pretty good at designing things to be serviced. Oh, look at that. Beauty. There's how the batteries come out right there. Bracket slides out and then out pop the batteries. Look at the size of that wire. Huge. Okay, here are the here are the dead batteries and the bracket. What I'm concerned about is that this bracket might be too wide to fit. And I am correct. I am correct in that assumption that this bracket, I've got a protective cap on here, or otherwise I'd have sparks everywhere, but this bracket is too wide for this single battery. I can maybe almost get two of these batteries in this thing. I'm just gonna see whether I could actually fit. If I could fit two batteries in this unit, then I could uh, parallel them and have twice as much capacity. So if I put one battery there, uh, not enough room for two batteries, enough room for one. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out a way to mount this battery without this bracket shorting out. And I think probably the easiest solution to that will be to take my hacksaw and to cut in, cut a square notch out so that I can create an opening so that the battery will not touch the terminals. If I cut a good half inch out on each one, that probably will be enough to hold the battery without allowing any contact. Then even if the battery were to shift, uh, it's not gonna make contact. So I'm gonna get my hacksaw and we're gonna cut a notch out here to clear the battery terminal, maybe take it down a good Take it in a good you know, half inch or so. We'll bring it in something like that. We'll cut that out. And that way uh, we'll be able to use this bracket. It'll hold the battery in place, but we don't have to worry about uh, starting a fire. So let me, uh, let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, <laughs> I got the big scissors out. These will cut through this thing, no problem. might cut it too far, that's the only problem. But 
that's good there. We'll do the other side here. In fact, I only have to take one notch out of this thing because as long as I protect one lead from shorting out, we should be fine. So we've got it bent now. We just have to kind of bend this metal back and forth a bit. Put my wrench on the other hand to give me some leverage. We'll just bend this metal back and forth a bit and it will, it will snap off. There we go. Now we've created a strap that will hold the battery in place and I gotta take a little bit more out of here because it's just a little bit close so I'm just gonna take another if you can see here I'm just gonna take another maybe quarter inch out of here so that this can't possibly touch and that'll hold the battery in place without uh, any down and then I'll, of course I'll put some tape or something or rubber around this side to prevent any any contact but take a little more out of this bracket here and then this bracket will be able to hold this battery in place so now as you can see we've now protected the battery from shorting once this is in place the, uh, there's a sufficient space here that once it's tight and in place and fastened it's not going to move anywhere we can reattach the battery terminals to the battery and uh, this thing should be well on its way to being repaired so we're just going to straighten out the, the metal a bit here flat down a bit take all the rough edges out of it so that it'll hold the battery a little better So we've got the battery fixed in and now we got to just put the screws back in to hold the transformer down. How, it's, how it works is that the transformer pinches one side of the tab for the battery and then the other side's got these two screws that hold it in place. So we've got a, about a quarter inch clearance on each of the tabs here. Again once the battery is fully installed it's not going to go nowhere because uh, it's going to be held in place tightly. I could drop this thing off the roof and the battery wouldn't shift. So this is just another prime example about, you know, businesses that don't want to support service it's all about selling people new crap and it, it's one of the it's one of my biggest pet peeves now is the non-serviceability of equipment all they want to do all the manufacturers want you to do is to sell you something to replace what you've got they don't care about servicing anything they don't care about impact to the environment. Sure, the governments are, are more than willing to charge you that environmental fee that everybody pays for everything. Every time you buy something new, there's a levy here and a levy there. $2 here, $5 there. A recycling fee. If we'd repair some of our perfectly serviceable equipment rather than throw it out we wouldn't be paying all these recycling fees okay the moment of truth we will plug the power in to this thing and test it out so there it is of course it's going to beep when I turn on the switch because it's not plugged into AC um, I don't believe this one will power up on its own, unlike the other. I could be wrong. It's been, it's been a very long time since I've actually used this UPS. It may very well be startable from a cold start. 
we'll plug the lamp into the back here and we'll see if it will cold start by turning on the switch I believe if I press one of these buttons there we go I pushed this alarm silence button and it turned on the inverter just like the other one gotta like it hit the alarm silence button and it turns on let's uh, plug this unit into power and we'll test it out so now we're plugged into AC power I'll turn on the power switch my light comes on a little light down here is on to tell me that I've got power here we go if I press the test button I don't know if test does anything, it's, I think the switch is kind of buggered it's supposed to simulate yeah the switch is kind of screwed on here it's a double pull momentary switch and when I flick it to the test side nothing happens that's supposed to put it into UPS mode but that switch is kind of buggered up it sticks but if I unplug it, so I'll unplug the power, and there it goes. Unlike the trip light, there's no fluctuation on this thing. It's beautiful. It works. If I press the alarm silence button, it'll silence the alarm. When I plug this one back in, we'll see how fast this one synchronizes. And then within a second. So there you go. Now I've got my my 450 watt APC American power conversion UPS fixed. Guess which one's going to protect my computer? Not the other one. This one's going to protect my computer. I trust this one. Two of the other ones failed within a year one of them in smoke no I'm not plugging my computer into it I'm going to put the metal case back on this guy and this one's going to go back in service because this is the real deal hope you enjoyed so here we go final test units all assembled really looks nice we'll turn it on okay I know this battery was fully charged and I haven't used anything out of it yet, so we're going to unplug the power, start the stopwatch, and see how long it goes before it goes into a low battery alert. That's the acid test. How long will it run? Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll keep them coming. I just got to find other stuff here that needs to be fixed.